Emmett Walsh. I hadn't seen her a long time. Wow. That's, that's something else. And me? Well, I'm much better with that. The, uh, wow. Okay, uh, let's say some questions. I have no idea what's going on. Say whatever you like. After that. Did it hurt? What? Did it hurt? <laughs> yeah. See, uh, I seem to think that going down for the hat was mine, yeah. but I'm not sure. Everything else was the Coen Brothers, for sure. The, I mean, that was their first film. Uh, there are there are hundreds of movies made by people, first movies made, that you never hear about. It is so hard to make a movie that that good without 20 years' experience. I mean, it's incredible that they were. That down at that point. The, uh, the I was shooting. I was shooting uh, down in Texas, and I was shooting Silkwood. No one knows that it's Silkwood. And uh, no, I didn't. Know, I didn't. As a matter of fact, I got cut out of it. But my agent, my agents had. Uh, they had passed a couple of things that I heard about, and I said, "Why did they pass on it? I, I want to know what's going on." You know, and. and uh, so I said, anything that comes in, I want to I wanna hear about it. I don't want you people saying it's not available or something. So I was down in Texas doing soap, and the uh, agents came, and they said, there's two guys down in, down in Texas that uh, got this low-budget film they want you to do. And I said, well, let me see it. So they sent me the script down. And uh, you know, I read it. it was a, it's very hard to shoot a movie at night. A lot of that movie is at night. It's very hard to, to get on film to get it interesting. And the other, the other thing was, uh, I, I thought, uh, I, I didn't know who these guys were or anything. And I said, what, maybe I can take a shot. And, and you know, it's like a Sydney Green Street. Maybe in 20 years' time, I could really do it in a real movie. So I asked the agents, I said, the, the, uh, well, what have they got? What have they got for money? What's the whole thing? And they said, they haven't got any money. But, <laughs> but what they'll do is they'll give you, they'll give you, uh, they'll give you 1% of the profits. And I said, I, I'm a, I have a degree in business administration. Yes. Zero times zero is zero. I mean, yes. And they, I said, that's ridiculous. And they said, well, no. So they came back the next day and they said, what, what, they, what they've done is, they will give you 2% of the gross. I said, you went from profits to gross in one day's negotiation? I mean, that's amazing. I still, it still means nothing, you know. I, but we, we worked and did the whole thing, and we finally come up with some arrangement where I could do it. And I went down, I was shooting Silkwood, and I go down to, Silkwood was in Dallas, and they were, these guys were down in Austin. So I would, I would go down, and uh, work with them. And uh, the first, the, I seem to think they gave me $100 a day per diem. So the first, first time I'm down there, they give me a check for uh, $700. I said, what's it? I don't know you people, I don't want your check. You know, I want, I want cash. Come on. So they <laughs> took it away and gave me a $100, these seven $100 bills. And this went on and on and on. And suddenly I ended up with a wad $100 bill. Couldn't get them in the bank, I'm trying to hide it. You know, what do you do, put it in a freezer unit or something in my apartment? And I said, I created a monster with this. I, I knew everybody was looking at what $100 bill in my pocket. But we went down there and we did it. Joe and Ethan, uh, they had been working on it for two years. It was their first film. They were from up there in uh, Minnesota or something. I don't know. And uh, the uh, and it, 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 was, it was it was weird. They had it storyboarded. They didn't. They had X number of dollars, and they couldn't afford to do a lot of shooting, a lot of takes. And everything. So everything was very 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 demanding. And I remember I'm up there in Dallas, and I get a call, and they said, uh, "Can you uh, can you blow a smoke ring?" And I said, "I'm not a smoke." And they said, well, well, when you worked on it, so I worked on it for a week or so, and all I did was make myself sick. And I couldn't get, 
you know, I couldn't get it. And I thought I got back. I said, look, I can't, I can't make it work. I can't get this. He said, don't worry. We, we, we've invented this machine that will blow smoke rings. <laughs> so we, we're shooting a scene with Danny where I blow smoke rings on Danny Idea's face, you know? And uh, so they put this pillow right beside me, you know, and it's blowing out these smoke rings, which were kind of, there's not enough moisture in them. They're kind of breaking apart a little bit, you know? And it's, we're shooting, and they can't quite get it. And there's a little prop girl, first movie she ever did or something, and she's the props on it. And she finally said, hey, give me, give me, give me that cigar. They use the cigar. She said, give me the cigar. She said, we use a, we use a smoke silk weed, silk weed out of my five brothers out behind the bar. She takes the cigar, pop, and she starts knocking off. I mean, it's, it's like incredible, and she does it for an hour. You know, and what low budget movies are. <laughs> so we're shooting in a roadhouse outside of, you know, outside of Austin. And I go out an hour and a half later, and there she is on the back steps, this girl. She is puking. <laughs> <laughs> for this movie. <laughs> but but that, at one point I said to Joel, uh, to Ethan, he said, uh, I said, why can't I look this way? And he said, we, we haven't got enough money. I said, what? He said, just do it, will you? And I said, this, you know, this whole thing is just do it for you. So we did the whole thing. And it was, so we shot for like four weeks out in Austin. They had it storyboarded, they had it all, and they had a great crew. Uh, the, the, uh, the man that operated, the cinematographer, Barry Sonnenfeld, went on the first movie he'd ever done. He, all he'd done before that was porno films. So that was the first film he ever had. <laughs> And, uh, and it was it was one a wonderful experience. And Fran McDormand had graduated from uh, from uh, uh, Yale uh, Finish School. She had just gotten out. She had just met and uh, just met and uh, met Joel. And uh, we, we we did the whole thing. And uh, I didn't pay any attention to it because I figured nothing would ever happen to it. And uh, so. Uh, about I, about six, eight, nine months later, I get a call. I'm in California, and they're in New York. And they gave me a call, and they said, uh, "We're coming in. We're coming in L.A. to get a couple, couple more shots." And I said, "Fine." So I meet them in the basement of some place, and they have a, a little camera, and uh, they, you know, a couple of voiceover things. They need a couple, of, you know, little pickups. And uh, and Joe Joe. Uh, Hand me this page, this page of uh, dialogue, monologue. And he said, uh, read that, will you? I said, what is it? He said, well, just read it. So I looked at it, and I read it once. And that's the opening bit that everybody talks about. Uh, they go in the cars driving, and the film opens. They, and I just put it down on a, you know, on a tape recorder, and that was all there was to it. And about, about four or five months later, I get a call, and they said, it's going to close in New York film festival. It's the closing film. Did I want to come for it? And I said, oh, I don't know. What, the, what is it? And they said, well, nobody's got any money. And what you do is they say, uh, and Emmett Walsh, you stand and wait and sit back down. And I said, no, I don't want to bother now with it. So it opens, the, it closes the New York Film Festival. It gets all the awards in the world. And I said, I could have been there, you stupid asshole. You know, you know. So I screwed that up. Right? And, uh, but uh, the first independent speech, uh, feature award, the uh, awards for uh, uh, the best independent feature film performances, that kind of stuff. Uh, Geraldine Page got it for Trip to Bountiful, and I got it for Blood So That was very nice. So I got it. That's enough on yeah, Go ahead. <laughs> uh, well, let's talk about Vermont for a minute. The, uh, the, yeah, well, I'm a Vermonter. My, my, uh, my grandparents on both sides uh, came into St. Alden back in the uh, 1850s, 1860s. <laughs> and uh, I'm third generation. My father, my grandfather, my father, and my brother were all U.S. Customs officers on the uh, Quebec-Vermont border. 
I grew up on Lake Champlain, Swanton, Vermont, which is, you know, four miles from the border, 60 miles from Montreal. And uh, that, you know, I started out up there. That was, that was the whole thing. I was, uh, uh, I was senior class president in high, in high school, uh, Swan High School. Ten girls and three boys. <laughs> when they said try out for the baseball team or the basketball team, man, you were in there. <laughs> so, so I went to, I, I finished there, I went to prep school in New Hampshire for a year after high school. The Tilt School in Tilt, New Hampshire. And because uh, my brother had flunked out of college in one semester at, uh, at Norwich. And uh, my parents sent me there. And then I went to uh, Clarkson, uh, born in Potsdam, New York. And I have a degree in, uh, I have a degree in uh, marketing, I think I said that. And I did the theater in the college over there, in the high school and so forth. I, I'm Irish, we're performers, you know. And, and I always enjoyed it on stage. I'm a stage actor. Not a, mm -hmm. I never was a movie actor or a television actor. I was a stage actor. And uh, so uh, when I was finished up in college, I had a professor. And uh, he knew I wasn't, you know, he had run the theater department. He knew I wasn't interested in whatever it was I gave him my degree. And, uh, and I didn't get it, I didn't get it in, uh, in four years or eight semesters. It took a little bit longer than that. The dean of, stu the dean of students had me in. When it was finally when I was finally going to graduate, and he said, "Okay, well, she said you're going to graduate, but we want you to know you're graduating with the lowest marks of anyone in seven years." <laughs> <laughs> so they hand me back to the fifth reunion, and you think I can rub their nose in the head? <laughs> so, uh, so I went to yes, <laughs> I went to New York, and I went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, and I didn't know anything. I mean, uh, uh, I, I, spent, uh, I spent my first two years in New York, you know, coming down from Swan, Vermont, and the whole thing in Clarkson College and all that. And I spent my first two years just putting band-aids on my knees from fall off curves, as they call them. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, and uh, why I, you know, if someone had told me to go home, you know, and, uh, I'm going to school and, you know, the American Academy and everything. And, uh, and, and I had trusted your word or something, I might have done that, but uh, I was fascinated by it. There was the first time after all the school and education that I had been challenged. And, uh, but I didn't know anything. It was, uh, uh, I, I don't know how, I, I cannot encourage anyone to go to the theater. But uh, you can't stop them, they're going to do it regardless. So you started auditioning in New York and for plays? Yeah, uh, well, I uh, I started doing summer stock. The uh, matter of fact, I did uh, I did uh, ten play all the, ten plays in eleven weeks at the Dorset uh, Dorset Playhouse in Dorset, Vermont, and uh, and did all the character leads. The play a week, the play a week, and uh, and uh, uh, it, you know, like wow, how do you do it? And uh, we used to we used to we'd open on Thursday and do two on Saturday I think and you know we'd do about four maybe five and then we were another play another play another play and uh, on opening nights on opening nights uh, we always had the uh, you know coffee and a donut out in the patio next to the theater afterwards and so forth and there was this little old lady uh, Mrs. Flynn who was reputed to have been to every opening night for the past fifty years. And she'd sit right there in the front row, and she's what we call a smiler. If you're doing a comedy, and you know, you know, she, you, they smile. They don't make any noise. You want to hear? The, you want to hear it? <laughs> but she, she, she's down there. She's down there doing that. And uh, so I ended up next to her one one of the opening nights, and I said, Mrs. Flynn, you should come to the, you know come to Saturday. It's a comedy. We had it going. We know how it works. And she said, oh, I love to sit there in the front row. I said, we know you're there. She said, I, 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 I said, we know you're there. But and she said, you know why I like to sit in the front row on opening nights? And I said, well, we like having you there. She said, no, I like to sit there and watch the actor's eyes when they forget their words. <laughs> I can see her picking the wings off. <laughs> 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 But anyway, 
<laughs> the, uh, so, so I went to New York, and I, I didn't know it, and uh, I, had to, I had to learn. In New York, you could see, uh, when I went there, you could see the second act, the third act of every play one to see. All you had to do was uh, put on a jacket and tie. The curtain was at 8, and at 8, 8.45 in the first intermission. And they could not have a cigarette or something. You know, and you could kind of, you could kind of crawl up in there with them. You go in and you find some empty rolls, and I watched the second and third act of everything. You know? And eventually the door people and the, the, everybody I used to see, and, they, and they'd sneak me in right in the beginning. I mean, I saw a miracle worker 25 times, raising, raising the sun. I said, yeah, but I used to watch. I mean, like, I didn't know, what did they do with their hands? You know, like, they said, they said, uh, uh, Richard Burton was uh, one of the finest stage listeners ever. I said, what the hell does that mean, a stage listener? You know, but I watched all these things. And I, you know, I, the merciful thing was I didn't have to unlearn anything. If you're a football player, you go to Notre Dame, and they spend two years unlearning what you learned in high school. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and uh, I didn't have to unlearn anything because I didn't know anything. It was all just, I just swooping in. So, <laughs> this, is the, this is the, I've never used so few words in an interview before. <laughs> Of course, tomorrow I'm going to talk to you and Michael Murphy also, and we'll mix it up a little bit there as well. Do you know Michael? Yeah, I know Michael. Is Michael here? Michael he was here. Mom, but he won the break his arm in Maine. There, is he there? Yeah. Yeah, Michael's going to... Yes. Michael is here after suffering an accident yesterday, but he's... What a trooper. I can't... But we're going to talk to him tomorrow morning uh, at 8.30. Um, at the Middlebury Inn, at the patio there, and with, also with Emmett. But I'm going to open it up a little bit to the audience, see if people have questions for Emmett. Yes, right here. Me? Yes. Oh, hi. I was just curious, because you see Joel and Ethan Cohen credited together, but one is the writer, one is the producer, or sorry, one is the director, one is the producer, and they write together. I was just curious as to what your interaction is with them making a movie, how much do they both interact with the actors, uh, Joe and Ethan Cohen. Joe, uh, 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 Joe, like Ethan, Ethan, who's he doing? Joe, Joe's here. Joe graduated from film school at NYU. Ethan has a philosophy degree from Princeton. You know, when I met him, they were like 27 and 29, maybe, or something. And uh, Joe know, knew about, they would write together. And they would look through the camera together, you know, setting up the shot and so forth. And but it was all Joel's Joel's uh, thing. And Ethan, but they would never move without the other. You know, there was a, uh, a silent language between them. They they just communicated without anybody know what they were talking about. And uh, but they were they were uh, uh, right there from from the Scott, from the beginning and the whole thing. I mean, they got they made some wonderful movies, my God. I did, I did the second one, too. I did uh, Raising Arizona. I did a little turn on that, too. And they didn't even care if I did it or not. I said, well, give it to you for nothing. They did, oh. So, <laughs> they found Johnny Goodman later on. You know, they, they found other people, you know. <laughs> and Barry Sonnenfeld, who was the DP when yeah. I became film director and did the Men in Black films, among others. Right. And, and, uh, you know, and uh, I think I did the... Like Wild Wild West, I think Sonnenfeld might have been right, the director on that. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and as I say, you know, <laughs> you know, going back to what I said before, you cannot do a movie like that. Uh, I don't care who you are, no one can do a movie that good first time out of the game. It, it's impossible. Yeah. Well, it's inventive, so the, and uh, the, yeah. visual, the visualizations are great. Uh, I mean, it's fairly sparse in a lot of ways. But every image counts, and uh, they fill the frame, and the way they use color, the way they use light, and it's, it's very cinematic. And, and, and I think you can see their passion for filmmaking. You can see the passion for cinema, and they, they know what they're doing. It's, uh, yeah, it was a, you know, it's a good cast. I think they had, you know, John Getz and the Fran and uh, Sam Arbor, the, the, the black guy, Sam Arbor. The, uh, it's a, and uh, Danny Idea. Uh, 
they, they said, Denny, Denny refused to get down in the, in the hole when they throw him dirt on <laughs> Don't go and down in some of that. <laughs> but yeah, but it, I, I haven't seen the film. I have not seen the film. And, uh, well, last time I saw it was a few years ago, and it was red. Somebody had a copy of it, you know, on some film festival. And uh, the, the colors in the, in the color film turn red in time. And... Uh, Unless someone spends a lot of money to advertise. Right. You know. It's worth noting that this film is part of the Criterion Collection through Janus Films. It's they're dedicated to preservation and really identifying the classic films, both 50 years ago and more recently. And so uh, it's a nice print that they they brought together. Uh, a question down here. Uh, Mr. Walsh, where did, where did you come up with the laugh? Where did you come up with the laugh? Uh, I. I uh, I don't know. I, I was looking for something. You know, I have no idea. The uh, uh, the a, mo uh, a movie uh, 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 is an eight by ten. I mean, you, it, on stage you can you know like uh, you know I'm picking you know you know uh, you can re you can do a lot with the character on stage. You know, mm -hmm. how, you know. In film, it's only an eight by ten. So anything. That, what can you do that tell the ring tells you something? You, you know, the, the, you know what, you know the, you know all these different little things. The bug on your that, head that will help help tell the character out. Now, uh, your question was what? It's <laughs> <laughs> about the laugh. The laugh. The laugh. The laugh. Uh, I, uh, I think came up with something. You know, I wanted. You know, I wanted. Uh, the guy, the guy who very, you know, it said Leon, uh, president of the Elks or something on this, on, on this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, the guy, the guy, uh, uh, goes to church, takes children to the, you know, he's, a, he, he's not a villain, you know, a villain's not a villain. If you can go away from what, what's written, it's more, it's much more fun. It makes him a much more, as a post you know. But against the, time, the, yeah. Uh, it's, they, uh, I had a teacher, they said, way back at the turn of the century, uh, acting was taught, stage was taught, whore on the left. Slinger on the right. Yeah, that, that was like, and I, I use that all the time. <laughs> so so that's, that's part of the, the laugh came, the laugh came, because I'm putting a guy out. You know, I've got him, you know, I'm just picking that, I don't know where it's going, what, I, you know, what happened to the finger, whatever it is, you know, that, all that stuff's fun. Well, there's this comedic element, this black comedic element, which is great. I mean, they're, they're, they both build tension and a sort of noir feel, but there's also this dark comedy that's playing all the time. And your character delivers a lot of that. You get paid to say things like that. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes. I mean, the, I, the, well, the way that the camera lingers on so many moments and lets them play out completely allows you to start seeing subtext in these characters just through their faces, through. Even that's just the bit with the, the bug on your on your uh, on your brow there, yeah. And they cut back and it's still there. And cut back and it's still there. And he's, here's a guy that's not going to get rid of the bug. And that's that's one of your defining characteristics. Bugs are okay. I, I get rid of bugs. Anyway, what about else do we have over here? When did you find out that movie was so funny? When did you really realize? what you had done at, uh, after getting the respect of, of other people for whatever. Well, you know, the film, it, it closed the film festival in New York. I went in and then it rela released, uh, what did someone, uh, someone said it, at, at, no, at no time during Blood Simple were there more than 100 prints of the movie. Uh, Stallone, Rocky Stallone, or whatever it is, opened at 2,200 film uh, screens at one night. You right. know? Yeah. So at no time, there was never any money on it. I saw, the, you know, after the reviews and everything, and the, the great attention of the picture in New York, and then I saw it in L.A., you know, and I did, I said, well, I didn't know they'd make a movie. You know, it was, it was a total it was a surprise to me. You know, I just, I just thought it was a kind of an exercise. I mean, it was a big hit at the time. This is early American independent film where uh, it, was an, it was a revelation, it was a sensation, and, and the Coens broke through immediately 
Now, what did it do for your career? Did it, I mean, it probably opened you to, to an audience yeah, that didn't no, know you were. Uh, I went from X to triple X or something. So, so <laughs> <laughs> at, at one point, they came to me. Uh, they wanted me to do a movie with Rodney Dangerfield. Back to school, I think it was called. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I said, I don't want to. I don't want to work with Rodney King. And then he was as bad as that, I'm saying. And I, and, uh, and I went in and met him and we read and some, you know, and they, they, wanted to, you know, they wanted to hire me for it. And I think I'd just done a, a, a swimming coach in uh, Ordinary People with the Red Bridge. Right. And it was a diving coach. Right. And then I don't want to work with it. And I, I told the agent that said, uh, don't, uh, uh, I don't want to do the film. And they said, okay, okay. So they came back to me and said, you got to do the film. I said, what? And they said, they offered X, and we said, you won't do it for less than 9X. And they said, OK, now you got to do it. So, <laughs> so, that, that's, the way, that's the way things happen. I, you know, I had to run in there. Uh, you know, if they, wanted, if they wanted something done, there was, there was uh, Charlie Dirty or Brian Dennehy or, you know, there were, there were about 10 of us that were doing it, doing it, you know, they'd get one of us to the other one. And it was very nice, I made a lot of money and, uh, you know, I had a, had a good time. The, uh, now I'm, you know, I'm reduced to doing, you know, film festivals. <laughs> Look at, I'm 82 years old. I'm having a good time. I'm still having fun. And there's still columns in the you know, and I, 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 Let's take, uh, I mean, we're going to talk further tomorrow to both Emmett and Michael. What time is it? Uh, why don't we take two more questions? If anybody has any. Otherwise, I'm happy to carry on some more conversation. Yes, Kate. So, how did you, you work with the director in terms of uh, performance and uh, what, what maybe if you remember what you brought to it? Uh, I mean, certainly the costume is probably going to inform you some. The Volkswagen is certainly going to inform you some. The, uh, the, the, the costume and the hat in particular came. Little, little girl in the war, wardrobe department at the University of Texas did the wardrobe in court. So, mm -hmm. And she fought all the whole thing. You know, there's that yellow leisure suit. I mean, right. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, uh, I get, first of all, I, I had, I only play, I only play off of Danny Hydea. You don't see me work with anybody else in there. It's all alone. You know, I'm all alone for, for the most part. And, uh, but it was, uh, you, 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 you what, what happened, you, you, uh, you're given the character, you're given the scene. Uh, I don't care if you're doing it on the stage or the movies or where, but you, you, you work out seven or 10 or 15 different ways of doing it, you know? And you show it to the director, and you go, oh, no, you go back and forth, you know, and finally you settle on something. Because I I uh, uh, I'm hired. I'm I don't I don't create it. I'm hired to do it. You know. So I show them what I think it might be, and they they say yeah or they say no. We'll try something else. We'll go a different way. You know. And uh, so with with uh, the series it's a series it's a, of the people in the film, and my guy is way off the wall. He thinks he thinks it's funny. The whole thing's funny until the guy said, I want you to kill somebody, you know? And he said, okay, go out fine. But uh, it was just, but I, I, didn't, I never thought of him as a bad person, or, you know, I thought of him as a, you know, a funny kind of guy that, you know, we had them in Vermont, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, off the periphery, you know, say, holy Moses. The, uh, and I'm up there in Swan, and I'm, 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 I'm up here for four four months this summer, and I see the you know I see the people 
that I went to, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh grade with. And I said, wow. And uh, how did I get away? And should I have gotten away? You know, the, uh, the, uh, uh, I don't know if I answered your question or not. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's a dynamic. I mean, what I see, it's, 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 I think it's useful for you to point out that he, he plays these scenes with Dan, and what's the dynamic between them? And that's a pretty defining um, relationship. And it's like there's always a bit of a negotiation going on between the two of you. And you're smarter than he is. Um, and he thinks he's in control, but you know, but you're smarter than he is. I mean, that's what I sort of get out of it. And so you, I mean, you start, I mean, typically the first scenes that you shoot start to create the character, and there's a lot of play in that period, but then you start to build on what's working, yes? I mean... Yeah, it's, uh, uh, Joe and Ethan didn't know anything about that. You know, so they more or less stayed out of the way, and you, you, right. you, you brought in what you, what you thought might work. You hire good actors. They say that 90% uh, of the work of a director is in casting. And, um, you know, and, and then directing is, is what you do to make up for the mistakes that you made in casting. <laughs> so, that, so that you bring an actor on that brings imagination and, and brings variability and brings flexibility, then you work with that. That's the fun of it. And they surprise you with what they do. I mean, I, I assume that's what you're talking about. Because, yes, they didn't have that experience. So you brought it. They knew when to recognize it, to see it, and to encourage it. Yeah. And one of the things I, I learned early on is uh, when I work with women, I totally defer to them. <laughs> I, you know, whatever they want, I, I agree to do it. You know, I, rather than, you know, if you, 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 can, you can fight with an actor, but you can't fight with an actress. The, uh, <laughs> like in real life? <laughs> uh, my, my, my third wife, uh, died under unusual circumstances, <laughs> and I was so upset I couldn't help the police. So, yeah, I never found a woman who was stupid enough to think I was a good catch. It wasn't for trying. I, you got to give women credit. They looked at this and said, I'm "Going home alone Saturday night. Don't want him around." The, uh, All right, so Kate, does that respond to the I think <laughs> All right, one more question if anybody has one. Yes, right here. Sandy. Right here. Yep. Um, I was wondering where you reside, reside now when you're not in Vermont and if you're involved in any projects currently or future projects. <laughs> where you live when you're not in Vermont. Okay, I, I live in Los Angeles. Oh, I live okay. in. Uh, uh, at, at one point, as I learned my craft in New York and so forth, and, became, and people, uh, people became aware, there, there's a thing called film presence. There are people who, who walk on, on, on film, and you somehow, uh, Vanessa Redgrave, you somehow watch them, you know, no matter what. There are stage presence. There are people that walk on stage, and you, just, you don't care what else is going, you watch them, whether they're doing it or not. And people found that I had stage presence. I had nothing to do with it, you know. And then they started they started to work me off of that, up and up and down on that on that tour. And uh, it's it's a gift, you know. The uh, uh, I'll, I'll finish. please. I'll, I have a brother and his wife, Harry and Janet. You know, my, they both taught school at different times. And Harry and Janet are, are driving along they're up there in St. Alphonse Swan along the lake. And they're driving along and, and uh, suddenly they see a, a deer jump in front of the car, you know. And he's like, he Janet, you see that? See that? See, see the way it, see the way it, it, it moved? And the whole thing is, wow, like Nuria, like a, a dancer. It's, wow, it's really great. And and they, they look at that and then they start the car and drive along. And there's another person that sees that and he sees the move. And, and he knows he can catch that. And he spends his entire life trying to catch that move, movement and dance. Never could quite get it, but can't stop. Harry and Janet are driving along. And suddenly they say, hey, 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 Janet, look, look at that. Look at that. The way the sun's going down with those clouds. 
and and wow, wow, and, it's, and see the see the way the waves are, yeah, and, yeah, wow. and they look at it, wow, and they drive off. Somebody else sees that, and he knows it's a pain, it's a great, great pain, and he spends his entire life trying to capture that thing, and then it's not there. And then Harry and the other drive off. And they, they, they hear this, he, 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 hear, hear that frog? Hear, hear, yeah, yeah, hear the frog. And, and the way, the, 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 way the, the birds are, and the, the, the wind, and the, you hear that? Yeah, oh, it's, almost like a, it's almost like a piece of music. It's a, yeah. And Harry and Janet drive on. And somebody else thinks he's pretty girl to hear something. Running Grand Canyon Suite. He spends his entire life chasing that. Mm -hmm. And they can't stop. Mm -hmm. Now, who is blessed mm. and who is cursed? Mm. <laughs> Harry and Jen are blessed. But so too. <laughs> but so, so too is a moment in performance where the unexpected is expressed, articulated, discovered, captured in thin air. I mean, that's what acting is about, too. It's finding that moment of poetry, the moment of grace, the moment, moment where what, what you could never expect takes place. And I think you bring that to the screen and you brought it in this film. You know, the behavior and the uh, character. And the, you, didn't, you didn't make it happen, you let it happen. Yeah, I did what? You pay me, you pay me, he shows up. All right. We're coming back tomorrow. 8.30. All right. Okay.